Lights? Music? Notes? What the heck? I have to tech! Burlesque goes beyond choreography and costuming and performing. There is a lot of administration and back-end stuff that you don't think of until you have to do it. What are some of the key pieces that we need as performers to make the most out of our tech run? So for those of you who have not heard of the term tech run or tech rehearsal, it is a brief period of time usually the same day as a show, usually a couple of hours before the show, when performers have a couple of minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes, to do a quick run of the routine on stage, just so they can get used to that stage, get used to maybe, maybe they need to practice that act on the stage because it's a debut, maybe they just aren't feeling like super grounded, so they want to at least like practice something on stage before the real audience is there. There's a lot going on with a tech run beyond just practicing your act. It is not a dress rehearsal, although it is kind of a little segue, stem, branch. Let's go to the beginning, shall we? Before you even get on stage, before show day even happens, you are going to get some things from the producer that you should expect quite early once you get hired or quite early once the producer is starting to set up things like Facebook groups or communicate with performers or really the administration pieces before the show. And one of those things that you will get sent is called a tech Form. A lot of producers will be different. Some producers will have Google Drive folders that all the performers have access to that they just have to upload their performer bios to and their music to and their tech notes. Some will have an actual Google document or a form that you have to fill out that's a little bit more clean because it's everything in one location that a producer will then have to separate after you fill it out. And some producers will have like a copy and paste thing in an email. Generally there's a lot of ways it could be done and there's a lot of different ways that producers like to keep themselves organized. As a performer, make sure you are taking note of any deadlines. Rule number one, know your deadlines. Towards producers, I always recommend giving an actual deadline and not saying ASAP because ASAP can look like anything. To some people, it could be tomorrow, but to other people, it could mean a week from now, or this weekend, or a month from now. Make sure you have a, a deadline that is realistic for performers to meet. Another little tip for producers is one thing that is a huge reality of life is that everyone has different things going on. Some people have executive dysfunction, some people have families, some people have really busy lives, and even some people have are actually professional burlesque performers, so they might have two, three, maybe even four shows in one weekend and always constantly going. Life happens, life passes us by, we might realize a deadline is due tomorrow and I have nothing planned for my act. So as a producer, I highly recommend to give reminders. When you give those tech notes, give the deadline so people know when to expect it. For myself personally, I usually give another reminder to all of my emails or all of my Facebook groups or however I'm communicating with my performers a week before the deadlines due, just a quick reminder, and then probably the day before or the day of the due date so that people know, oh yes, right, tomorrow or today, yes. Okay, it's getting done. As a performer, we don't always know, but if you do know that you're gonna miss a deadline because you have work or you're busy or something's coming up, life situations happen, make sure you're talking and communicating with your producer to let them know so they can know at least to expect your notes either a few days later or a week later, and then they can adapt how they're gonna plan the show. So make sure you are sending in your tech notes by that deadline. Make sure you are filling out the notes how they are requested. If the tech notes are requesting an MC introduction, make sure you actually write an introduction. Don't just say things like, you know me MC, walk your magic. For my productions, even when it's people are my best friends, I still expect them to fill out my notes as a request because it takes extra effort for me to write notes. All MCs are going to be very different. Some MCs are going to want to write their own notes, but they'll be able to at least write their notes based on the information that you gave. And other MCs might have no time to prepare, maybe they also have busy lives, or maybe it's an MC who's not even local to your scene and maybe they're traveling. They might not know you, maybe you're a brand new performer to them. It's good to have information so they know what to say about you if they do decide to make something. Make sure you are submitting music to the producer that is downloaded, file, and mp3 format. Do not send YouTube links. Do not send links to a Spotify playlist or any links at all. Don't do a YouTube converted video. Often theaters or often venues will have really good quality sound equipment. Not all, but quite a few. As a performer, something that is very, very convenient and nice for your producer is if you label all of your music files that you're going to send to them. Your name, 
and then the actinate. That way they don't have to worry about renaming any files, making sure they know who has what song rather than having to listen to it and check your notes at the same time. It's very convenient. Once show day is here, now you get to do your tech run. Make sure you arrive on time. If you know you can't make it because you have to work or family commitments or something happening before the show and you're going to be late, make sure you let your producer know in advance. And I highly recommend a couple days in advance, not the day of the show. Really big reality, don't be surprised if you don't get a tech run. It is a huge responsibility for a producer to be able to start a show on time so that the audience can be happy, they can sit down when they expect, people like to know when to expect things, and then you can also guarantee the show is going to end on time and not run an hour late. A lot of producers I know will actually say after 7 o'clock, nobody gets a tech run depending on the show and depending on who's performing. Often tech runs will be guaranteed to headliners and maybe not to everyone else or some producers might say everyone can do a tech run as long as you're finished by this time. So every tech run is going to be different. Again, depending on the producer, depending on the venue, depending on the show. Generally when you do a tech run, couple of ground rules. One, it is a mo it is a time for you to walk the stage, to maybe perform to your music or do something just to get a feel of the audience in the area. So when you arrive to the venue, a couple of people you want to talk to are the producer, the stage kitten, the MC, and the technician. Sometimes that's going to be all one person. Maybe it's the producer who's going to translate things to everyone else. But for the most part, I'm used to talking to everybody. <laughs> so make sure you're introducing yourself, talking to them to make sure that they know what you want, creating the vision that they can with their equipment, and keeping themselves organized. If you don't get a tech one, you can still listen to your music backstage or listen to your music. And often producers might allow performers to listen to the music with a headset on um, and just walk the stage with, if there's no technician available. Generally, most most of the ways that tech runs will happen is sometimes you'll go on stage and the technician will talk to you through like a microphone or something and like show you the lighting. That's usually a big old theater show or like a, a burlesque festival. And what I'm most used to is when you just talk to a technician, they might have limited lights, they might have on and off, or they might have a blue wash and that is it. Sometimes you'll have all of the options at your hands and sometimes you will have no options. If you get those notes in on time before the show when there's a deadline, then it's going to be really nice because the technician will already know what you want and they might have already had time to create that for you or at least work towards something similar to that. If they say you're good, they're good to go, then they'll play the music and I'll just do my act on stage and then I'll just give a thumbs up walk off stage and then the next person can come on. For most shows there's going to be a stage kitten and a stage manager so often they're going to be managing tech one and they'll be calling performers as spots become available. Sometimes again like festivals or theater shows you might have a designated time so like four o'clock is available for Cherry Cheeks, 4.10 is available for Cherry Cheeks Twin. Going back to those grand rules for tech one, tech one is not intended for you to do your act in full costume and every single reveal that you do in your act. A tech one is just so I can map out my choreography, map on that stage, map out spacing, map out where the audience is when I'm on the stage and where I have to look. The most I will ever do for a tech one is if I have a big prop or a big costume piece that I just want, I need to get practice on that specific stage for. Another thing is if I have a, co a main costume piece that is a specific color, if my costume's mostly red, then maybe I'll bring a really big piece of my red fabric with me or my panel skirt, feather fans, whatever really is a prominent piece of my costume. That way the technician can really see exactly what colors they have to match with the lighting and what colors they have to use to make you pop and make you not blend into the background. Rule number two, if you are ever going to leave the venue for food, for just a break outside or rest, make sure you let the producer know before you leave. Usually if performers arrive at a venue and they're not going to leave and then come back, do it after you do your tech run don't do it beforehand. Rule number three, everyone's gonna be different. I'm not gonna tell you to either do this or don't do this, but I recommend that you do not put 100% of your energy into a tech one. That's just a personal preference so then people can save energy for when they actually do the show. Some people will go 100% for the tech one and also for the show. Rule number four is treat your technicians, your stage kittens, your stage managers, and all staff with respect. Show day can be a lot for a lot of people. It can be overwhelming at times if people are go, go, go all the time, or if you didn't get to eat or sleep that night before. Life happens. Maybe you have things going on in your own personal life that are mentally impacting you at a show and sometimes people make mistakes and that is okay. Rule number five, if you get a tech one that has lighting involved with it, 
That's a great opportunity for you to find your light before the show. Finding your light is a the theatrical term, language. Essentially what that means is as an audience member, when a performer has their light, I can see their face. The light is shining on all of them. They don't have any like shadows. Not a grand rule, but just a piece of advice and tip. This is my number one thing that I like to do when I'm doing a tech run, or even if I'm not doing a tech run, but other performers are. I like to walk around a venue and sit in every seat I can, <laughs> or a variety of seats. So I'll sit in the best seat, which is like usually front and center usually. I like to sit in the very back seat. I like to sit in the worst seats possible. I like to sit in the middle when people are doing the dress rehearsals or tech ones. As a performer, I want to make sure that I am giving every single audience member the best interactions or the best show that I can, even if they're in the worst, worst possible seats. Shows that have VIP seats, which is like the front row, I love them. They're amazing. They paid good money to get those seats. However, because of those seats, they often get the most interaction, the best views, they get to see everything. But the people on the sides and the people in these really awkward spots that can't see as well, they still paid for a good show and they deserve it. So when I get to sit in these different seats as an audience member, I get to see how much energy I have to push into the audience or where I have to focus my energy and where I might get not quite as much love. And when I get to do my tech run myself, I get to really focus on how can I aim at that spot? How can I aim at that spot? How can I aim at that spot? Especially in a new venue, because every venue is different and every venue is going to have strengths and weaknesses. A reminder as well that the producer is there to answer questions if you have any, so don't be afraid to talk to them if you do have any questions about the show. And at the same time, remember that all of those individuals are also working at the same time. You might not be able to socialize with them or really chat. That might be something you have to do later when they are a lot less busy, not managing tech rehearsal or not running music. Whatever the individual's job is. Rule number six. Seven? I don't remember what number I'm on. If your act includes something like strobe lights or fog or something else that's like a special effect, make sure you include in your tech notes a trigger warning or content awareness so that the MC can say. For myself personally, I actually recently found out I get anxiety from strobe lights, so I actually can't look at strobe lights anymore. <laughs> and I laugh, but it sucks. Some producers will not allow them, period, because of that. However, if you are allowed to use them and you know you're going to use them, make sure that your MC and producer know that so that they can let the audience know before your act goes on stage. Because it is not fun if individuals have to deal with asthma or those anxiety or seizures or anything else and for me that's generally it that's everything i focus on for a tech one and i am going to have some more tips and tricks specifically on keeping organized for tech ones and making sure you're getting those tech notes in on time and how to really save you time and capacity on my patreon so if you want to learn more about how you can also be a little bit more on time organize learn a little bit more check it out because i am excited to share more tips and secret secrets with you but with that said if you have any comments if you feel very confident if you have little secrets that you like to do for your tech ones leave your comments down below and i'm really curious to see how you do a tech one or if you have any questions even otherwise with that i will see you all next time bye